Hey, all right, so we're gonna get back on this 84 uh, 200ES Big Red that we brought in. We got it running last video. You know, it's, uh, it's the one that was all covered in mold. What we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna work on getting the uh, front ends tore down. Remember, I'm gonna cut off the, uh, the basket or the rack and the cage mounts on the original front end and we're going to actually weld that on to the 200m that's what i'd like to get done tonight still taking it a little easy not pushing it too hard but you know a little progress every day a couple of days you have a lot done so uh enjoy So when you go to change these out, your kit's going to come with a new, a new race. So you're going to want to knock these old ones out just to get a long punch. You can do it with a screwdriver. Um, punch is better. But uh, you've got two of these. You've got one in the top and you've got one in the bottom. You just want to knock them straight out. That's all there is to it. Now be sure and clean this up. Hey guys, so what we got here, we got our 84 front end here. This is our original big red. We talked about it, you know, these are un unfixable. You see the lowers are already missing on the set. Uh, this is our 200 M front end. They are both 13 and a half inches between the forks. The original big red bolted on with two bolts here underneath the brace and then two, one on inside of either fork. Where this, the 200M, actually has four bolts underneath. So we're gonna have to adapt that fender a little bit. We're probably gonna have to put some holes in it and make it fit. I'm gonna cut these mounts off. That was the whole reason to do all of this. I'm gonna cut these mounts off. I'm gonna transfer them over here to this front end, and paint this uh, so it'll look nice again. Uh, again, this is a budget build, but we can still do some, some neat things and we can improve the bike overall. It's going to ride considerably better with this front end versus that front end. Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, it's winter. I got my hat on. You can tell that's when it's winter here. Uh, yesterday it was 90, and this morning it was 60. I, I don't know. Fall happened sometime between nine o'clock last night and around seven this morning. That was fall. If you didn't catch it, you missed it. Now we're into winter, so you're gonna see a lot more hats. Just kidding. It just it's Florida. That's what happens. You wake up one day, you know, you roll the dice. I didn't want to sacrifice the look of the 84. To me, the 84 is just the best looking bike. I like the decal on the tank. Uh, I like, I just like the way it looks, the cage in, on the front and the, and the rack on the front. It, somebody says three-wheeler, that's what I think of. I think of the 200 ES uh, Big Red. I have taken the 200M front end. It's on the bike, it's a direct fit. All you have to do is, is swap it out. You can use the original bearings if you wanna chase those or you can get aftermarket bearings, which is what I'm gonna be doing. So as you see here, I have welded on, I've cut off all the tabs off the original big red front end, and I've welded them onto the 200M. This will allow me to retain the rack. I don't know, I'm probably not gonna use this rack, it's pretty, pretty roached out. I've got some other racks out in the boneyard. 
I'll pick the best rack and it'll bolt right up all factory locations for the most part. Um, that being said, I'll show you what I did have to do is uh, I had to make this bracket right here. This one right here where my finger's at. I had to make that. I just took a piece of flat bar and went all the way across the, the two parts of the upper of the fork. And then that allowed me to weld the factory mounts where they were. I didn't modify the rack. I didn't modify the cage. All of that is OE. So in the event that if you wanted to change it out, you could. Uh, the rubber grommets are all going to go back into their spot. You see our lock-in pins are still going to clear. We had to put these mounts on the top as well. Overall, 90% of the people are going to look at this bike and they're never going to notice that. It's going to look just like an 84 is supposed to look, um, except it's going to have suspension. And, and that's, that's the whole reason I went through the, the process uh, to do this. Things to note, if you want to do this, it's not hard. But here's what I learned. I had to take this mount and lower it all the way down to the bottom of the upper fork section. And the reason being is the upper fork section of a 200M is actually shorter it's also wider now when i say that i'm not referring to the fork spacing i'm referring to this upper fork spacing if you look close these are the original locations as compared to where this rack bolts in at and as you see when when these tabs came in there was nothing to, to weld to like there would be on your big red that was the reason i had to put this flat bar in here other than that, the only other thing that I had to modify is the angle of this lower brace. It's still straight. I didn't bend it or anything, but if you, on our actual big red, it's a little bit more about that angle there. And the reason being is, like I said, the, the red part here, this upper fork section, is about two inches longer on a big red. That allows this brace to be more to 45. This is the original front end, and if you look close, these welded here. And if you line those up, you'll see that the front end is actually longer on the 84 Big Red. Considerable, actually. So, lining up my arm's probably in the way. But lining up the tab here with where this was cut off, you see that the front end is about an inch and a half taller than the 200M. So, where these mounts were here, to relocate them, I had to move them down. The only way I could compensate for that being shorter was to change the angle of that gusser of that support. You also see here that where these welded in at, here, they welded here, there was nothing this close together. So this front end is actually taller and narrower here at the upper part. Um, but it bolts on with the factory hardware. I like that. I like it. it's done in a way that most people won't notice. And to me, if you're going to build something and do something different or modify something, it needs, it needs to pass muster. It needs to pass the scrutiny of somebody looking at it. And the biggest compliment you'll ever get for making something is when somebody says, well, I didn't even notice that. Hey, Chloe. Chloe's here, everybody. Just keep an eye on me. Chloe. Say hi to the internet. Hey, internet. So there you go. That is putting mounts, putting a rack in a cage on a 200M front end. It's not that difficult. You can certainly do it. We do have an axle for it. It came with it. <laughs> this is the hub that was on this bike. And uh, <laughs> it ain't right. The axle's correct. The brake housing and the uh, backing plate here is correct for the hub, but it is not correct for the bike. And uh, the reason I really can't adapt it is because this hub is held on by this big notch that's in the bottom of the fork on the 250 ES bike. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but it's got to be better than that. This came off of another 84. You can see that's the wrong bolt for that. So now we're going to deal with that. That's a trick of getting a nut out of a socket. It's actually better if you lay it on concrete. You get a nut jammed up in a socket, hit it with a hammer with it laying on the ground on concrete. Generally, we vibrate right out. I don't know what we're getting into. The only part of this I really want is the spacer and the hub. So we'll see. So a press is one of those tools. If you have it, it's the best tool ever. You may not use it very often, but when you do, it's great. It's a lot like a welder. It, uh, 
it opens you up to a lot of capabilities that you just wouldn't necessarily have without it. What I'm trying to do here is I will sacrifice this lower fork part here because it's trash anyway. I'll even going to sacrifice this axle. Uh, the threads on it are screwed up. They crossed th the previous owner, somebody cross threaded it and then ran it halfway down. That said, we can re-tap this, re-thread it and save the axle. So what I mean by that is I'm going to mushroom it because I can't get a, a bolt on it now. The threads are just too screwed up. So I'm going to go ahead and mushroom it and sacrifice the end of it. I'll end up cutting the end of it off and re-threading it and possibly still be able to use the axle. What I want is this hub section here that has the uh, flange on it for the hubs and then the brake system itself. We just want to drive that axle out and we're going to try to reuse the spacer. I'm hoping because the fork spacing on a 200E and a 200M are both 13 and a half inches apart that the hubs are interchangeable. I don't know that. We're going to find out together. <coughs> But a press is a, is a great tool if you have one and if you can keep up with the handle. They should put a chain on these things like the, the pins at the bank. You know, that way uh, you'd always have the handle with you. This is the Harbor Freight cheap 20 ton. I found it on sale and then I had a 20% uh, off coupon. If y'all ain't figured out yet, I'm kind of cheap. Okay. As long as we establish that, we're not keeping any secrets here. I would have preferred to have a, uh, a nut on this axle to do this. I really would. Um, but like I said, it's, just, it's not going to thread on there. Now, when you're using a press, if you're new to presses, until they move whatever you put underneath them, it's probably going to, it's going to build up a lot of pressure and it's going to bend whatever gets in its way. But when it goes, it's probably going to pop like that. And when that happens, uh, it, it gets your attention. I broke it. Hmm, good thing we have another one of those. Dang, that sucks. Plan B, they say. So we talked about this in another video. What we have here is the axle is, is locked up or, or rusted to the piece of pipe that's inside this hub. You really can't heat this because if you heat the hub up, you're never gonna get the, the, the pipe hot enough. If you heat the axle up, you'll end up melting it off before the heat will transfer through. If you, uh, you know, you can put penetrating oil down there and hope that that gets it. I'm gonna go ahead and sacrifice this. All I need and want is the brake drum to the spacer. That's what I need. That's what I need out of this. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna sacrifice the axle. I'm gonna just cut it off. I'm gonna be able, that should allow me to remove the interior of the brake assembly, which is broken now anyway. I don't want the axle, I don't want the fork, all that to get out of the way. That'll give me a flat surface, hopefully, to press against. Um, we will, should be able to heat the axle up from that side, let the heat transfer back that way a little bit. Let's see what happens. Well, fellas, that's what's called throwing a kitchen sink at a problem. <laughs> we use hammers, die grinders, sawzalls, chisels, wire brushes, a press, extensions, a punch, anything else I could think of, I threw at it. Sometimes that's just what you got to do. Um, and, and that's kind of part of the... That's kind of part of the, the struggles that you have using used old parts. Is, is you gotta you gotta you gotta salvage them. You gotta you gotta pick and pull from different places. You gotta sometimes think outside the box. Uh, you know we sacrificed that that axle, and I fractured the backing plate for that brake assembly. I, I hate that, but 
I got to move forward. We're going to get this bike finished. And, uh, and we learned something today. It looks to be... Okay, well that's a first right there. Uh, looks like a Big Red 200E, Big Red uh, 200ES brake assembly will f and hub will fit on a 200M. I did not know that. I knew the lug pattern was the same. Both of these bikes run the nine inch wheel. Again, this is another reason why I go through this is the 200M also shares the same bolt pattern, the same nine inch wheel. So you can swap your wheels around. You could run nines all the way around on this bike. So here, here's where we run into our, our only real modification at this point. As you see here, I can't straighten this fork out. I can't rotate it. I don't have it pushed in all the way, but it is touching. So what it means is the spacer here off of the big red is too long. That really is an easy fix out of everything that could have happened or could have went wrong with this, that's an easy fix. And what we'll do is we'll just trim this and that is a fix. I'm happy with that. That's gonna be really nice. It centers up perfect. Um, I didn't know those parts would interchange. I kind of thought they might just because they share the same wheel pattern, same wheel size and they're really the 200 M shares so many parts with the big reds. We are, we are well on our way at this point to getting this back up on through. I know, I know it looks like crap, <laughs> but uh, this is the process. Um, hopefully, when we get this done, people will look at it and they go, that's just a big red. They won't notice that front suspension on there. They'll wonder how you did that. So we got our 200M front end. We're gonna go ahead and install the bearings from our all balls kit. Um, we've already knocked the races out of here. You saw that earlier in this video. I kind of want to complete the front end in one video. That way you can search for it. This, bearing, this front end still has the races on it from the previous setup you see here. And so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna take this bottom race off and that's the one that gives everybody a hard time. The front one's actually pretty, pretty loose. It just comes off and throw it away. But this bottom one, it's just been on there for so long. You may have to cut this off and, and I have had to cut a couple of them off. When you're working with your front end, put your castle nut or your top nut back on just to protect those threads. You drop this and bang them threads up. You just cost yourself about 30 minutes more work. What you have here is you have a lower race and then you have a dust shield underneath that. So what I do is I just kind of knock it loose and just work it around. Um, it's not a press. It's just got a lot of crud underneath it. So it looks like we're gonna get lucky on this one. If you look here real close, looking at it before you get it tore apart is a good way to remember it. This is just dirt and, and, and muck and an old wheel, gre uh, wheel bearing grease is what that is. But this down here, you see this, this is a, a rubber rised uh, gasket, I guess we'd call it. And so that's just to keep dirt and debris from coming up from the bottom side of the stem. Remember the tires throwing all the mud up in here. That's what that's for. The kit should come with a new one. We're going to wire brush all this up. I don't know why, but I've never needed to use the shim on one of these bikes. So there's our bottom race that our individual bearing set on. Here's that rubberized dust shield. It's here, it was underneath it. I'm gonna take all that off. Now I'm gonna go and get a uh, washer here. So this is the factory shim here on the bottom. Okay. Here's your part number. Okay, so this is your, gonna be your kit. You got the lower dust shield that we talked about, upper dust shield, they're the same. 
You have two bearings and two races, one in each pack. Comes with a sticker. The 993516 is your upper bearing. And your 993517 is your lower bearing. So there's just a little bit of difference in them. The dust seals are the same, so it's not gonna matter which one you put in. Um, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to drive your races in to socket, which is probably where we're gonna end up with this, because what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna slip, really, and mar up that surface. That's, remember, think about it, that's where that bearing's gonna be wanting to ride. All right, so what I got here is a one and three sixteenths uh, deep well socket. It's a half inch drive. I'm gonna use it actually as a bearing press. I'm gonna actually use it to press these seats into place or these races into place. It is just a little bit, I don't know, it may be even perfect. Y'all tell me, that's pretty doggone close. But it will fit just inside this neck. And so I know that I'll be able to drive this in far enough. The problem is people run into this lower one seats a lot deeper than the top one. And so the, when, you, when you, a lot of people do this, they, they drive the lower end and they don't drive it in far enough. You gotta really drive it up in there. If you look back at this video, you see how much more effort it took to lower, knock the lower one out because it had so much further to go. So just a little tip, put a little grease in here. Remember, this is a press fit. Um, just, you know, make life a little easier on yourself. You don't have to put a lot, we're not greasing bearings here, but we can slide this race in, in the event that we make a mistake, uh, and, and that does happen. Um, it'd be a little easier to take it back out. So that's all, just a little preventative maintenance. Keep the rust down, make it a lot easier to knock it in. And like I said, if you have to knock it out, Remember, 993-516 goes in the top, okay? There you go. And we're gonna do the same thing, except this one's gonna be on the bottom. Remember the dish flares out at the top so the bearing sits in, and the one on the bottom, the dish flares out at the bottom so your bearing sits up. So if you look close, about the distance from my thumb to the edge of that socket is how far deep that one goes in. Where this one is actually proud just a little bit. So that's what I was telling you, that the lower race sits further into the neck. And that's what you're looking for across the top. That race is just barely proud. It just barely sticks up a little bit. And the one on the bottom, if you look, it's about the same amount, except instead of being proud, it's recessed, okay? There's your lower one. And that's really all there is to it. And, and I know that when you fight with some of these projects like this, I don't mean to make it sound easier than it is. Um, sometimes it's not that easy. So now what we're gonna do is we've got our races installed. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put it together without the original shim. I like this red grease. It's, uh, it's red and Hondas are red. And that's about the only reason I bought red grease. Our lower bearing is our larger bearing, and it's gonna go with the taper up. This is how I pack bearings. It's not, it's, it's nothing fancy. And it's certainly messy. So I just put a glob in my hand like that. I take my bearing like this, and you see where the little slot is here. And I'm basically pushing it in and dragging it out. And you see what it does is it pushes it into the bearing. 
and I'm gonna rotate the bearing in my hand a little bit. I push it through and I drag it out again. And I just continue to do that all the way around the bearing. Now this is how I pack a bearing. They make bearing packers and, and I'm sure there's a lot of other ways to do it. This is how I was taught years ago. What you wanna do is you wanna keep doing that. If you look close, you see the red starting to come up. It's about halfway through. So I need to put some more in there. So what I'll do is I'll rake out what's on the inside of the bearing, put it back in my hand, and then I'll just continue that process. And each time you push it in there like that, it gets a little further up in the bearing. Now that's how I do it. Uh, it would be nice to have some gloves, but I'm out right now. So we're gonna take our bearing and we're gonna put it taper up. So that really is all there is to, to pack in a bearing. Um, same, that would go for trailers and cars and trucks or anything. The process is still the same. I do them all the same way. All right, so we're gonna fix and put our bearing on. This is our, this is our dust shield. It comes with your kit. And I'm gonna put it with the metal flange down because the reason, like I said, there's no instructions. I may be doing this wrong. I'm, put it in the comments. It matches up to that bearing so nice with the recess and it makes up for that little bit of recess between the cage and the bottom of the bearing. So that's how I, I come to that determination. So we're gonna put our dust shield on and our bearing. We're gonna slide it all the way down. Now a piece of pipe would work for this. Uh, I, it would be ideal to put this on, take a piece of pipe, slide it down. It would just need to be a little bit bigger than this. But I know a lot of y'all don't have a piece of pipe. We're gonna use this punch and I'm just gonna walk it down. This is not a press fit. It requires a press. It's just a tight fit. Be sure you can get on both sides of it. And set it on home. Be sure it sits flat all the way to the bottom. Where you're gonna run into a problem is you're not gonna have enough threads here at the top. If you, if you get some of this off, it, it starts taking up too much space. All right. So now the lower half is done. I'm gonna slide it up in the front or up through the neck here. I'm gonna put some more grease on here just because you can and now's the time to do it. You can go ahead and put some on the races if you want. I will have to blow all this back apart for paint, but I want, like I said, I wanna get all this in one video for you. Again, our upper bearing is gonna sit in this orientation. I'm gonna have the dust shield, except this time, it's actually gonna have the metal part to the top and the crown to the bottom of the dust shield, not of the bearing. The bearing is gonna taper and go into the top. All right, so again, I got a palm full of grease and I'm just pushing this in. You should be able to see that and then dragging it back across my hand. And as you see, it fills up the little gap there. I'm gonna rotate the bearing and repeat. I'm just walking the bearing all the way around, just taking off a little bit. You can go ahead and place your bearing in here, kind of hold it down. You see how low it sits with that race down like it is? That's what you want. If your bearing is sitting up really high, it's never gonna clear. So we have our dust shield in the down position. Goes on. We have our oversized collar, our original bolt and collar. Goes on next. So now we got our front end on here. Just go ahead and take the weight off of it, pick it up. We got our bearings in place. And we're just gonna run this nut down. And when you're putting tension on a bearing, you wanna over tighten it and then back it off a little bit. Uh, they make a tool for this, but guess what? I don't have one. So channel locks it is. It's righty tighty, lefty loosey, no big deal here. You go ahead and turn your forks to hold themselves like this. I got my leg against it down here. When you're seating a bearing, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get it really over tight, cycle it, turn it back and forth a couple of times. You don't want to break anything, but 
You want it snug and you want to be sure that you get everything pressed. You want to get all that slop out of that because you will feel it. You can always go back, of course, and tighten it up if you need to, but that requires taking the handlebars off and all of that good stuff. Okay. Now, um, a lot of people ask about the stops. They're steering stops. That's what these little ears are, tabs here on the bottom. A lot of times they get wore down. You have an actual fixed stop here. It stops you from being able to turn the wheel so far. In certain swaps, especially the 200S, these stops aren't long enough. You can, if you can weld, you have a welder. You can weld and tack and do a series of tacks here on these and extend them, and then therefore build your stop up, stopping your handlebars from slapping the tank. That's your biggest concern. You want as much turning radius as you can get, but you don't want to damage the tank in the process. So that's where steering stops come into play. That's good. There is no play in that at all. I'm very happy about that. So then you would have your chrome piece here. You would have two uh, large, I think they're 17 millimeter bolts there. And then you would have your decorative acorn nut on top. There you go. And that is all there is to installing the all balls stem bearing kit. Again, that part number. It'll be in the description. It'll be the first item in, des in the description if you're looking for it. Um, you can get that through Amazon and uh, that's it. It's not hard and it sure beats trying to track down the 16 ball bearings for the bottom and the 16 ball bearings for the top. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a whole lot easier not to mess with that. All right, there you go. All balls kit, 200M, keeping our factory mount for our racks. Factory hardware, I love that. It's the way it's, it just it just looks right, it feels right. It's gonna be a nice bike. It's gonna be a nice bike. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we didn't get very far, but we covered a lot. We really did. When you when you're fabricating stuff from scratch, when you're making stuff work, when when you're using old parts and fighting rust and missing parts and the wrong parts and it just takes longer than it would if you had all new parts. But that's why I pick and choose. Those bearings, I think, are $30, $36, and it's right. It's going to last a lifetime. I don't have to mess with all the individual balls on the top and the bottom of that. Um, who knows the condition of those? And if you've only got one bike to work with and, and the stem's loose, you've lost one or two of those balls on the top and on the bottom. So where are you going to go to get a, a, a ball bearing like that? You're kind of stuck. So when doing stuff like this and, and using cheap parts and cheap bikes you know we're buying the cheapest bikes we can get and we're bringing them back from the dead when you do that you do have to spend a little bit of money here and there and that's one of those places um, rear axle bearings is another one of those places you don't want to put a bike together and have wallered out bearings and, and the bike is all rattly that's where you spend your money you work hard for your money that's where you put it you put it in the bearings when you do this swap. You put it in the axle bearings when you do that. Um, I'm not saying replace every part on the bike. Y'all know me by now. It's uh, I've spend the money where I see fit and I try to use everything I possibly can. As always, like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate it. I'm grateful for every one of y'all subscribers out there and everybody that follows the links in the description. Y'all take care. Bye.